Hello everyone, let's resolve a vector into components. This is a quick video, the important things that you need to know. So when we ask you to resolve a vector into components, we're asking you to take the vector and break it up. And when I say break it up, I mean we're going to break it up into two parts essentially. A horizontal or a parallel part, otherwise known as the X component. You can see my hand is running along the X axis and the vertical, otherwise known as the perpendicular component because it's perpendicular to a surface generally, otherwise known as the Y component. This is an example of a vector. Now, as you know, vectors act at a particular angle relative to either the horizontal or the vertical. So what I mean is you can see the dotted line that represents the flat horizontal. This vector, it could be a force vector, it could be a velocity vector, whatever the vector is, it acts at an angle. Let's say the angle is 30 degrees. I can take that vector and I can break it down into its pieces or its components. This vector is pointing up and to the right. Think about the general direction that it's going. It's going up and it's going to the right. That's the general direction. So when I break it up into components, I will have two components. One component that is going to the right, that is called Fx or the horizontal component or the parallel component. And then we've got Fy, which is this one that is pointing up, that is also known as the vertical or the perpendicular component. What I've now done is I've given the vector a magnitude. So I've given the vector a size. As you can see over here, I've made the size of the vector 100 Newton, and it's acting at an angle of 30 degrees over there, anti-clockwise from this horizontal line over here. Now, if I ask you to break it down into its components, some teachers teach it like this, as if you can learn it. They say, okay, to find the X component, Here's the X component. Look at where the angle is. The angle's over here. The X component is adjacent to the angle. So here's the angle. Here's the components I'm looking for. Do you see that it's adjacent? It's next to. It's not opposite. It's adjacent. It's next to. And which trig ratio uses adjacent? Cos. So they'll say, what we're going to do is we're going to say cos 30 is equal to adjacent. What is next to the angle? F of X, the hypotenuse is 100. Take the 100 over. So F of X is equal to 100 cos 30 Newton, which you can work, you can work this out. You can take your calculator and you get 86,60 Newtons to the right because you see it's pointing to the right. So do you see that when I worked out the X component, I used cos in this case. Then they could say, okay, how do you work out Fy? Now, again, look at the angle. It's a right angle triangle, which is why I can use my trig ratios. Here's the 90, by the way, which is why this is the hypotenuse. To find Fy, I am going to be using the opposite. Look at the 30. Opposite the 30 is Fy. Take a look. Opposite the 30 is Fy. So we go, which trig ratio uses opposite and hypotenuse? sin or sine. So sin 30 is equal to your opposite, which is Fy, over your hypotenuse, which is 100. Take the 100 over. So Fy is equal to 100 sin or sine 30. And again, you can work that out. You get 50 Newton up. Okay. So some teachers say, everybody, in order to work out the Y component, you use sin. In this case, it works. So some teachers teach it like this. They say, when you work out the X component, this is what you do. To find the X component, you take the hypotenuse or the size of the vector. In this case, it's 100. You use cos and then you put the angle, which in this case is 30. To find the Y component, you take the hypotenuse. So this is the hypotenuse. I'm just going to write hype. So you take the hypotenuse, then you say sine, and then you put the angle, which is what we've done. In this case, it works out to be the same thing. If I'm looking for the horizontal component, the X component, I'm looking for this component over here. And again, you use cos, just like I said over here, you use cos because it's next to, it's adjacent. So 50 cos 30, that will get you the X component. To get the Y component, it's this one, it's going up 
you use opposite, so you use sine. So Fy is 50 sine 30. However, I just want to point out in this video that that is not always true. It depends on where the angle is given. So I want you to take a second and look at this example. I want you to pause the screen and I want you to try and resolve it into its X and Y components. And you'll see something interesting. So what you'll see is the following. The angle in this case, just take a look here. In the past two cases and in this one, the angle was given between the X axis and the vector. Do you see that? In this case, the angle is given between the Y axis and the vector. And look at what happens here. If I want to break this vector up into components, it's going to have an X component that's going to the right. Okay, that's F of X. And it's going to have a Y component that is going up. Do you see like that? How do I know that F of X is going to the right and F of Y is going up? Because take a look at the vector. The vector is going up and to the right. Now in this case, in order to find the X component, look at the angle, the angle here is 10. In order to find the X component, I'm looking for F of X, which is opposite the angle. And what trig ratio uses opposite? Sine. So we go 20 sine 10 Newton. And that gets me 3,47. Now, in order to get the X component, we actually used sine or sin. But remember in the previous examples, to get the X component, we use cos because it was all about where the angle was in the diagram or on the diagram. Okay, so how would I get the Y component in this case? You take the hypotenuse and now I'm looking for the Y component, which is next to the angle. I hope that everybody can see the difference between opposite and adjacent. So here's the angle. F of X is opposite f of y is adjacent, it's next to, yeah, it's right next to the angle. So to get f of y, I will use 20 cos, and then your angle 10 newton, and that will be up. And again, you can work that out. Remember, I'm rounding off to two decimal places. Okay, my calculator said 19 comma 6, 9, 6, and so on. I'm rounding off to two decimal places. The point that I'm trying to make here is that you cannot just learn in the case of resolving a vector into components that to get the X component, you use a certain trig ratio. It's all about where it is on the Cartesian plane, where the angle is given. If you'd like a longer video going over this exact concept i go into it in a little bit more detail just click the link in the description box below or click the playlist link below for more vectors lessons bye everybody